Hello, good morning, P Win community. It's the phenomenal woman herself, your empowerment life coach, Sharice L. Irby Castle. Good morning, good morning. Okay, yes, I usually am not on this early. Those of you that know me know that, you know, morning time is a very special time, you know, at Bedside Baptist. Um, but I do have a message that I wanted to be able to share on this winning Wednesday about being a warrior. And so I have a, a full day just like you do. And so I wanted to make sure that I got this message out today that I was diligent, that I was intentional, and I was obedient because I don't know what all the day will bring. So I'm allowing everyone to come in. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining me on this winning Wednesday. So while everybody is joining, let me just remind you, if you don't have my book, Whole Women Win, Unleashing the Winner from Within, pick up my book. Go to the website, pwen.org, and you can order it. I'll autograph it for you, and you can get the book. Every woman should read that book. Okay, I wanted to give time for the P-Win community to see that I'm on. Yes, this time of the morning, it's almost 9 o'clock. It is 9 o'clock. Yes, I'm here. Good morning. Welcome, welcome. So let me just jump right into our content. Come on here, warrior. I want to talk today about transitioning from being wounded to being a warrior. So often we're wounded, we're injured, and we don't know quite how to get to that warrior status. But there's a warrior in you. Come on here, warrior. I am calling out the warrior in you. So let's talk about what does it mean to be wounded? What does that mean? I mean, we, we know you can, you know, stump your toe, you can cut yourself, and you're wounded. So let's give you a official definition. So to be wounded is to be hurt or suffering from a wound, offended or upset by what someone has said or done. So if you've been offended by someone, you're wounded. If you've offended someone, they're wounded. If you are suffering from some sort of hurt, it could be a breakup of a relationship. It could be a failure of a, a job lack of getting a promotion, it could be your business going under, it could be, you could be hurt at the loss of someone close to you. Hurt comes in a lot of different forms and fashions. You can be hurt or you can be offended. And so that can catapult you into a status. Good morning, Letitia. That can catapult you into a status of being wounded. So now how do you transition from this wounded status? Because can I just be real this morning? For some of us, when we're wounded, that's it. We just laid out and life is just over, right? You know, you hurt my feelings. I'm done. You've offended me. You've offended me. You've offended my family. Maybe you've offended my child. Uh, I, I'm done with you. But that residue of the wound still exists on you. And so others around you, they see that residue. They feel that residue. They know that you got an attitude because you've been wounded. They know that you're hurting. Anyone who is spiritual, anyone who has a spiritual discernment will know that you are wounded and that you're hurting. And what happens? Hurting people hurt others. And so you have to be able to transition from that place of being wounded into being a warrior. And a lot of times we try to deny that we're wounded. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I ain't worried about them. I didn't need them anyway. I'm good. You are not good. You are not. That is a front. That is a mask that you're putting on to hide the hurt that still exists there. You're not good. It's not okay. And it's okay for you to say, I'm hurting, I'm wounded, I'm not okay. I'm not okay with what you said to me. I'm not okay with how you treated me. I'm not okay with how this situation went down. I am hurting. Now, let me get some help. Give me some time and some tools. Hello, Lisa, I see you. Give me some tools and give me some time so I can transition 
out of this place that I'm in so my wounds can heal. So you have to be able to transition. So now let's talk about what it means to be a warrior. We use that word. I said in, in the title, come on warrior. And so I see you, Lisa Marie. Hello, hello. So what does it mean to be a warrior? A warrior is brave and an experienced soldier or a fighter. A warrior is a person who is engaged or has experienced warfare. A person who shows or has shown great vigor, courage, and aggressiveness. Let me say that again. A warrior is someone who is brave and experienced. An experienced soldier or an experienced fighter. A person who has engaged or experienced warfare. A person who shows or has shown great vigor, courage, and or aggressiveness. Now, here's what the Urban Dictionary says. The Urban Dictionary says, Men and women who are fearless, strong, and skilled fighters that are lacking in our modern times. It's saying that we need men and women who are fearless, who are strong, and who are skilled at fighting. If you're a Bible reader, the Word tells us adversity is going to come your way. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So you better be able to fight. Adversity is coming your way. There's going to be haters. There's going to be weapons that are formed against you. And those weapons are going to show up mighty. But who? how many of you know that we serve someone who is mightier? And those weapons that will show up, those weapons that have been formed to show up against you, those weapons will not prevail. Those weapons will not win. But that doesn't mean that you don't have to fight. That does not mean that you don't have to show up fearless and strong. That does not mean that you don't have to be skilled in warfare. Come on now. The Bible talks about putting on the whole armor of God, right? It talks about a breastplate. It talks about a belt. It talks about a, a helmet. Your feet have to be shod with the preparation of peace. It talks about a whole armor that we have to put on and be suited up. If you didn't have to go through warfare, if you were not going to have to fight, why would you have to put on an armor? Okay, I'm teaching right now, whether you know it or not. So please share this stream. Please share it with your networks. Let's get some more people on. I want to get this message out because this is good. If you can tell, this just really dropped, okay? <laughs> and so you have to be able to fight. You have to be skilled. You better know how to go into battle. Matter of fact, here's what I, I share with people inside of my workshops and when I'm coaching. If I got something going on in my life, do you know who I want on my team? Do you know who I want in my top 10, my top 5? I want people, I want men and women who have gone to the edge of the ledge but didn't jump. Those are the people that I want on my team. Because if you went to the edge of the ledge, that means that you were done. You were forced. You were ready to get up. But you had to fight. You had to become aggressive. You had to become fearless and strong not to jump off that ledge. Because there's a whole lot of people who have jumped off. There's a whole lot of people who have given up. There's a lot of people who said, I'm done. I'm checking out. I'm checking out of my career. I'm checking out of my business. I'm checking out of my relationship. I'm checking out of life. Listen to me. There are people who are homeless who have just checked out. They're homeless because they don't want to deal with the pressures and the stress of life. They are done fighting. They have just checked out by choice. There are people who are in the grave who have checked out by choice. Hello, Francisco. I have not seen you in a while, but I see you. Thank you for joining. There are people who have checked out and they're done fighting. They have become fearful, not fearless. Yes, Lisa, I see you. Giving up is not in your DNA. You are fighting daily. It is a daily, I got one better, it is an hourly fight for many of us. And so you have to understand what it means to be a warrior. 
And we got to have people in today's time, right now, 2016 going into 2017, we need people who are fearless. We need people who are strong, who are skilled to fight in this warfare. We have to have people who, who can fight and are skilled fighters because guess what happens? Those skilled fighters in turn help others. Let me get into the transition. I, I done got on a roll, y'all. I'm sorry. Let, I'm going to come back. Y'all should have wheeled me back in. Let's talk about how do you transition from a position of being wounded to the position of being a warrior. How do you make that transition? <clears throat> Excuse me. Number one, own your stuff. Own your stuff. Own your junk. Own your bad decisions. Own your bad attitudes. Own how you mistreat others. Own, because see, here's some things that happen. Some warfare that comes our way, we want to blame somebody else, right? We want to cast blame. We want to put blame out. But really, we dug our own hole. Really, we were throwing shade. We were hurt, so we were hurting others. We did some stuff that attracted some of the hurt and some of the things that came our way. We did that. We have to own it. Before you can transition from being wounded to being a warrior, you got to own your own stuff. You got to own your own mess. You got to look in your closet. You got to look in the mirror and you got to look at you. And this is hard to do for some people. For some of us, we do not want to look at ourselves. Oh, yeah. We want to be able to casually look in the mirror and say, oh, I'm cute. Oh, my hair looks good. Oh, I'm fine. Yes, you are. We know that. You look good. You woke up looking good. I'll go do, do one better. You came out the womb looking good, okay? But how's your continence? How's your attitude? How's your character? How's your integrity? How's your prayer life? You have got to own your own stuff. You got to be real about who you are and how you impact the people around you, including you. Sometimes you treat you worse than anyone else could possibly treat you. So you got to own your stuff. Number two, don't just identify your moments of truth, but learn from them and create a corrective action plan. Let me say that again. Number two, don't just identify your moments of truth. A lot of us are good at identifying a moment of truth, of saying, I got an aha moment. Wow, here's what happened, and here's why it happened. I'm great. I am glad. I am happy that you've identified that moment of truth. But now we need to learn from that moment of truth. What did you get from it? That didn't just drop in your spirit for, for kicks and giggles. What did you learn from that moment of truth? Now you have to create what I call a cap, a corrective action plan for your life. That's what you have to do. You have to create a cap. So <clears throat> let me talk to you about a cap. So I manage an operations department, 300 people strong, for a Fortune 10 organization. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is funny. It's early in the morning. Those that know me, you know it's before 10, so you know how my voice is. Um, so I ran this, this department, operations department. I'm an operations girl. That's why I'm strategic. That's why I'm all into plans and process improvement and all those sorts of things. So here's what would happen. When we had a significant event happen in our department, that was negative. <laughs> Let me give you a great example. I was over Medicare Part D enrollment. And one open enrollment where we have thousands, millions of, of senior citizens, Medicare recipients, beneficiaries enrolling into a Medicare Part D health plan. We had a sister site that was in Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee. And we had this situation where they were taking enrollments. They were supposed to enter the enrollments, box them up, ship them to Scottsdale, Arizona. And in Scottsdale, we were storing those enrollments. So 
the plan is that they would take the enrollments old fashioned on paper because we had a system issue. They would enter that enrollment in. Then they would put it into a box. They would ship us the box. We would store the boxes because we stored all the files. Well, this particular open enrollment, after open enrollment ended, we started getting <clears throat> messages that we had beneficiaries who had no coverage. They had no prescription Part D coverage. So we had to start researching. Long story short, we found that one of the boxes that was sent down, the enrollments in that box, they had not been entered. Thousands of them had not been entered. So of course the VP looked at me and said, I need a corrective action plan. What are you gonna do to ensure that this never happens again? How are you gonna correct the problem for these thousands <clears throat> excuse me, of beneficiaries who do not have coverage and what are you going to do to ensure that this doesn't happen again? So I had to do a root cause analysis. I had to look at the root cause of why this happened. I had to keep asking why, 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 why until I got to the root cause. Once I got to the root cause, then I had to begin to create an action plan to prevent that root cause from occurring again. In my coaching, in my counseling, I, I help people. I recommend that people look at the situations that have happened in your life that are causing you angst, that are causing you not to live your best life, and you create a cap. You create a corrective action plan. I talk about it in my book, Whole Women Win. You do a root analysis on your own life, on your own situation. If you done went bellied up, you should be doing a root cause analysis of why your finances are in the situation and the condition that they're in. If you don't have any friends, if you don't have a board of advisors, if you don't have people around you, if you don't have people that are attracted to you in a positive way, if you keep attracting the wrong people, the wrong people keep hanging around you, you keep running people away, then you need to do a root cause analysis. Why do I keep choosing and attracting this type of person when really here's the type of person that I need in my life? Why do I continue to have failed relationships? You got to do a root cause analysis. You got to keep asking why, why, why until you get to the root of why you continue to have failed relationships. Then you create an action plan so that you don't continue along that same path. So number two, <clears throat> don't just recognize and identify your moment of truth. Learn from your moment of truth. Create a corrective action plan. Implement that action plan into your life so that you do not continue to make adverse decisions that do not benefit you or benefit your destiny. Those decisions don't benefit the promise in your life. Create a correction action plan. Number three, celebrate your successes. We do not celebrate our successes. We celebrate other people. Sometimes we celebrate prematurely. But we have to get to a place of when we hit our target, when we set a, <clears throat> excuse me, when we set a goal and we hit that goal, we should celebrate that success. We should celebrate that we hit that goal. That's monumental in your life. Do you know that only 40% of Americans even create goals? And out of that 40%, only 8% actually achieve their goals. So if you achieve your goal, that's a call for celebration. If your business hits its benchmarks, that's a cause for celebration. If you have achieved what you set out to achieve, you need to celebrate your discipline, your tenacity, you not giving up. You need to celebrate your outcomes. Celebrate your successes. Look at any military troop. When they have conquered, when they have completed their mission, do you not see those men and women coming together, celebrating each other? Hello, cousin, I see you. Do you not see them coming together high-fiving? Way to go, man. Way to go, sis. I saw you. Thanks for having my back. Thanks for covering me. We did it. Yes, we conquered. Jumping. There's praise all the way around. Do you celebrate your successes? Do you pull those people in that helped you win and celebrate their contributions? Do you celebrate your successes? So we're 
we're talking about how do we move from being wounded to a warrior status. Number one, we own our own stuff. Own your stuff. Number two, we don't just identify our moments of truth, but we learn from them. We create a corrective action plan. We implement that action plan. Number three, we celebrate our successes. We celebrate our successes. Yes, you got to celebrate. Now that you're walking in warriorship, though, there's a responsibility that comes with that. You have to teach somebody else how to fight. You have got to teach somebody else how to fight. You got to be able to reach out to those <clears throat> in your sphere of influence and you got to teach them the skills. You got to teach them how to hold on, not to give up. How many of you know that? So many times we give up right when the blessing is right there. The blessing is right in reach. If we just reached out a little bit further, we would have the blessing. But we give up before we get there. So those of us who are skilled, who know how to fight, been there, done that. We done wrote a book about fighting. We done run, wrote a book about overcoming. We have a responsibility to get out to our younger generations and to our peers and be able to help them in warfare. To be able to teach them how to fight and how to fight with, with dignity, how to fight with elegance, how to fight knowing that God is on your side. I told you about the armor, right? You got to teach others how to put on that armor. You got to teach others how to hold on. You got to teach others how to, how to stay with it, how to have tenacity, how, how not to be fearful, how to be able to put things in God's hands, but still take action. Because how many of you know you can't sit down? You got to take action. You can't just let the strong man come into your house and take over. You got to take action. You just got to know that you already got the victory. But we got to teach others how to fight. We got to teach others how to be able to overcome depression. We got to teach others how to be able to have a healthy self-esteem. We got to teach others how to take a lick it and keep on ticking. Some of us can't go through nothing because we fall apart. You got to be able to teach somebody else how to keep it all together. One of the things that I learned from the strong women in my life is how when everything around me is falling apart, I can still keep it together. <laughs> Those on my team, they would always tell me, they would always say, you are just grace under fire. This building could be coming down and you would still be a fierce leader. You would still be leading under grace. And at the time, I thought that was cute. But then the Lord began to really minister to me about what that means. You got to be able to keep your composure. You got to be able to stay focused when you're fighting. You got to be able to keep your eye on the victory. You have to be able to strategically make decisions and be able to cover those on your team and cover those who are all around you. You have to have clarity and you have to, you have to, you have to be able to maintain your composure so that you can think strategically and clearly. So you got to be able to teach somebody else. And as I said earlier, I want men and women who have gone to the edge of the ledge but didn't jump. Those are the people who I want on my team because they know what it means to be in despair but be able to pull it all together and stay the course. Stay the course. So come on here, warriors. I'm calling all the warriors. I'm calling the warrior that's in you to come forth and assume your rightful position. Get out of that posture of being wounded and step into your warriorship. Step into your warriorship. Now make this a winning Wednesday. Matter of fact, let's call this Warrior Wednesday. We'll call this Warrior Wednesday. Come on, warriors. Come forth. To stand on the front lines. Show yourself to be true. Show yourself to be mighty. Show yourself to be reliable. Show yourself to be the men and the women that you have been called to be on this Warrior Wednesday. Now go win.
Now stick with me. I have just a couple announcements that are really, really important to me. The Phenomenal Woman Empowerment Network is a 501c3 membership organization. If you're interested in joining our organization and, and tapping into all of our trainings and our, our, our workshops and our seminars, our conferences and all the things that we have to offer, please go to our website, pwen.org, check out our membership, become a part of the Phenomenal Woman Empowerment Network. As I said at the top of the, the video, if you don't have my book, Whole Women Win, Unleashing the Winner from Within, please get the book. It's on sale right now. Go to my website, pwen.org, and order the book. Two more things. Huge. Saturday, January 21st, is our Grow Your Business Boot Camp. All business owners, all professional men and women, you need to be at this boot camp. We have some phenomenal drill sergeants that are coming, that are going to help you grow your career, help you grow your business. We have Felicia Davis. She's coming to talk about your brand and how do you brand yourself, your business, your personal self, if you're in corporate America. We got Dr. Vernette Joseph. He's coming to talk about productivity. How do you produce and how do you use productivity to grow your business and to be a more effective professional in the workplace? We have Sean Heineman. He's coming to talk about social media. How do you use social media to grow your business? Social media is changing day by day. You can't use yesterday's uh, social media principles and expect to be in business tomorrow. You got to be on the cutting edge. And Sean is just that. So he's coming to help you use social media to grow your business. Melena Shaw, she's coming to talk about networking. How do you use networking to grow your business? How do you use networking to grow your brand, to grow as a professional? She is a millennial who is on the cutting edge of networking. Come out and hear from her. <clears throat> we have Denise Carroll. She is a global instructor and teacher on presentation skills. She's coming to talk about speak up, stand up. She's going to talk about our presentation skills, our ability to articulate. You want to come out and hear her. Odie Harris, he's coming out to teach us how to use video effectively to grow our business, to grow our brand, and to help us in the workplace. We have Sherry Bass. She's a regional VP Primerica. She's coming to talk about your finances and how you build wealth. How you build wealth. That's important for all of us. So you want to come out. Yours truly. Yes, I will be there. We're going to be talking nonprofit. We're going to be talking about marketing, sales. Great information. Register. $45. You will not find this type of industry expertise for $45. Full day of boot camp. Come out in your boot camp gear. Join us. If you're traveling from outside of Phoenix, Arizona, contact us. Let us know. P Win Travel will help you with your accommodations. Come to this boot camp. Ensure that your business and your professional skill set is in the best shape ever. Last announcement. Saturday, May 6th. Save the date. Mark your calendar. Start saving your money for our sixth annual phenomenal woman empowerment conference our theme is all i do is win all i do is win come on now so i need you all to show up and show out at our sixth annual phenomenal woman empowerment conference saturday may 6th soon i'll be making some announcements about our presenters they are phenomenal so you definitely want to be in the house if you have any questions, reach out to me. Please share this video. Please share this video. Thank you for joining me this morning. I know I'm usually not on this early, but I thank you for joining me, for tuning in, and for supporting me, Cherie Speaks, for sh supporting the Phenomenal Woman Empowerment Network, for supporting my book and all that we do in the community. God bless you. Now go win and allow that warrior to come forth. Have a fabulous Wednesday and I'll be talking to you soon.